It's time for Lady Cat Softball. Let's go to Lady Cat Park, where the game will be called by KSST Sports Director Don Julian. Don? James, Terry, thank you very much, and welcome everyone into Lady Cat Park. It is a gorgeous uh, evening uh, for uh, softball or anything else you'd like to do. Uh, 76 degrees here in the ballpark with a feels-like temperature of 78 52% humidity, east uh, 7 miles per hour, uh, and uh, looks like it's kind of blowing uh, perhaps from right field across to left field. So uh, balls to left field might get a little bit of boost, uh, you know, unless, of course, it's not unusual for that wind to change. Let's check in now with uh, Abby Beggs for uh, introductions. In your Sulphur Springs Lightcats, starting off with the West City Bulldogs. Number 11, hit a loss. Number 13, Janae Williams. Number 15, Cheyenne Jones. And number 18, Julia McKinney. Leading off for the Bulldogs is designated player number 20, Lauren Skinner. <laughs> Playing center field is number 7, Haley Butler. <laughs> Adding third and playing, and playing left field is Cassidy Mullen. Batting ninth and playing first base is Brooke Johnson. Batting fifth, number three, Madison Daugherty, playing third base. Batting sixth, number 17, Hadley Patrick, playing shortstop. Batting seventh, batting seventh, number 12, number 12 Aspen Holm, catching. Batting eight, number five, Carly Weatherford, playing right field. Batting ninth, playing second base, is Cassidy Kirkendall. And on the mound tonight is number one, Abby Thomas. And now the lineup for your Sulphur Springs Lady Cats. Number five, Cabria Harrison. Number 13, Tessa Holt. Number 14, Abby Bear. And number 16, Darby Williams. Leading off tonight is number seven, Kelsey Wallace, is playing shortstop. Batting second, number 17, Kelsey, uh, Sierra Smith, playing second base. Batting third is number 22, Brinkley Jobber, playing pitcher. Batting fourth, is number three, Kate Womack at third base. <laughs> Batting fifth is, no, is number 18, Sadie Shroud in center field. <laughs> Batting sixth is number 10, Aslan Cabell, designated player. <laughs> Batting seventh, number eight, Landry Bell in right field. Batting eighth, number 12, Maddie Millsap is at first base. <laughs> Batting ninth, number six, Nala Woodley in left field. And on the mound tonight, batting 10th is number one, Bailey Haggerty. Let everyone rise, gentlemen, 
gentlemen, wave your caps for the playing of our national anthem. Our introduction to the players and the national anthem. That was done by Abby Beggs. Uh, she's a student here at uh, Sulphur Springs High School and member of the track team. Uh, she'll be part of the contingency, or the contingent, I guess, uh, heading over to uh, the uh, area track meet. Uh, Abby is a uh, discus thrower. Also, uh, the shot put, but. Uh, She'll be heading over there to our discus where the Lady Cats finished one, two, three in the in the discus. Good uh, good track reports. Uh, my goodness, they just had really, really nice tournaments or, or meets, I should say. <laughs> Meet in track. Bailey Haggerty pitching for the Lady Cats tonight against Roy City. And she's throwing uh, warm-up pitches into Brinkley Driver behind home plate. Maddie Millsap down at first, Sierra Smith at second, Kate Womack at third, Kelsey Wallace at shortstop, Nyla Lindley in left, Sadie Stroud in center field, and Landry Bell out in right tonight, filling in for Abby Fight, who we understand is under the weather, and we hate to hear that and hope that Abby uh, recovers uh, quickly. There's been quite a bit of illness. Uh, uh, we did a golf story uh, earlier this week uh, from the uh, uh, district golf tournament. And two of the Wildcats players missed the first day of the tournament because they had the flu bug. So uh, that's Being sickness going off, around. Number 20, Skinner. And uh, scheduled to hit for Roy City. Uh, scheduled hitters here in the uh, top of the first inning. The designated player, Laura Lauren uh, Skinner. And then Haley Butler and Cassidy Mullen. One, two, and three in the Roy City batting order. And we appreciate Coach Lee Kirkendall and all the folks over at Roy City for allowing our live streaming of this ball game tonight. And it'll also be available on YouTube as well as right here on the radio and, uh, and uh, tape delayed on Channel 18 on our cable access channel. And here's the first pitch of the ball game up too high to Skinner, a slap hitter for ball one from Bailey Haggerty. First pitch, by the way, tonight at 6.36. A little bit tardy tonight. And Bailey Haggerty ready to work with the 1-0 pitch. And here it comes. Oh, a hot shot off the glove of Kate Womack. Not only was that hit hard, but uh, also took a big, huge, waist-high hop. So, very obviously a base hit there, no question about that. Now batting number seven, Haley Butler. Nobody outside of uh, Adrian Beltre perhaps uh, could have made that play, and he retired. So Skinner on it first running, and here's uh, Haley Butler, the center fielder for the Bulldogs. And the pitch on the way, bunted down to Womack at third. She grabs it and had no throw. And so, uh, she just, I guess, just thought she could not make that throw in time. So a bunt single. And the first two uh, Lady Bulldogs are on the base hits. Kind of uh, familiar to the 
JV game where they scored uh, four runs in the very first inning and ended up winning that game five to one against the Lady Cats JV. Here's Cassidy Mullen, left-handed hitter. And Haggerty's pitch on the way. She let that one go in there for a call strike. So Roy City playing a small ball here. Actually, that first one wasn't. That was a uh, a very, very well hit hard ball down to third base on one giant hop. And again, that third baseman to a leadoff hitter is in close. Oh, one pitch up too high. One ball and one strike to Cassidy Mullen. Boy, a lot of noise around the ballpark tonight. I'm hearing it all in my ears, but it's an occupational hazard, I guess. And the 1-1 one -one pitch on the way. Bunted on, hit foul down the third baseline. One ball and two strikes to Cassidy Mullen. The number three hitter for the Lady Bulldogs of Royce City. I noticed on their lineup card, and it could be they just bought them in bulk, but they just say Royce City Bulldogs. No, Denison was like that. I asked them one time, are you Lady Yellow Jackets? They said, no, we're Yellow Jackets, just like the guys team. Here's Bailey Haggerty now, 1-2 pitch on the way and just nicked foul back to the screen. Just getting a piece of that and staying alive is Cassidy Mullen. Again, Lauren Skinner at second and Haley Butler at first for Royce City as they've opened the ball game with a pair of uh, singles. Bailey Haggerty with a 1-2 count now on Mullen, the third hitter. 1-2 pitch is swung on, hit foul down the left field side. Nyla Lindley was racing after that ball, but uh, she could not get to it. It stayed in the in the ballpark here, but hit just inside that uh, foul fence. That uh, goes uh, parallel to the third baseline and on out to the left field line. Nyla was giving it a good chase, but could not get there. One and two, the count remains. Mullen steps back in. And Haggerty with a 1-2 pitch, swung on and hit foul down the third base way. Kate Womack fielded that one and actually won the race to the bag, but uh, it was moot point since it was a foul ball. So uh, Cassidy Mullen hitting uh, several fouls now. Reminds me of our kickball days and Little League baseball days. When Remember when people used to say 99 fouls and you're out? I guess that was a rule somebody just made up. Here's a 1-2 pitch, swung on and hit to Womack at third, steps on the bag, throws across, not in time at first, gets the lead runner. So Mullen is on on a fielder's choice. But Kate Womack gets the lead runner unassisted, fielded that ball and tagged the third base bag and tried to get the uh, double play, but not in time. So Lady Bulldogs at second and first, one out, and here's Brooke Johnson. Big power hitter for Roy City in that four spot. And Haggerty's pitch on the way just off the plate for ball one to Brooke Johnson. Right-handed hitter, and she definitely does not look like she's up there to bunt. But she might. Here's a 1-0 pitch, and that is a call strike on the outside part of the plate. One ball and one strike to Johnson. Four hole hitter for the Lady Bulldogs and runners at second and first, one out. And again, that wind really blowing out to left field tonight. It'll give uh, shots out there a boost. 1-1 one, one pitch, maybe why Haggerty is keeping that ball outside. That was too far outside. The count goes two and one now to Brooke Johnson. Hitting here in the top of the first inning from Lady Cat Park. And two one pitch, that's off the plate. Three and one the count. Wildcats of Sulphur Springs tonight. The baseball team is in Lindale completing that three-game district series. They played a round robin and have one game against every team and then two a week against teams. Three and one pitch in there for a call strike, and the count goes full now to Johnson. Runners at second and first with one out here in the top of the first inning. Umpire showing us it's three balls and two strike count. And Bailey Haggerty, 3-2 pitch, swung on, grounded to second base, fielded by Smith, throw to second. Oh, a wild throw to first by the shortstop, and a run will come in to score for Royce City. 
Oh, my. As Kelsey Wallace really was trying to throw that ball hard to get the double play. Now number three, Madison Coffrey. So they got the they got the runner at second base from Sierra Smith over to Wallace. And then uh, Butler came in to score on that uh, wild throw. And so Johnson is on on a fielder's choice. First pitch now to Madison Doherty is in there for a call strike. Haggerty's 0-1 pitch off the plate, one ball and one strike. So a run in for the Royce City Lady Bulldogs here in the top of the first inning on two singles and two fielder's choices. And mix in an error. I know Kelsey was just really trying to unload a hard throw to get that double play. Here's a 1-1 pitch swung on and nubbed out toward the shortstop. Wallace has it. Her a perfect strike to first on this one. And that's going to do it for Royce City. So they do come up with uh, one run. They had two hits in the inning. There was one Lady Cat error. And uh, one Royce City Lady Bulldog left on base. And we've played half an inning here from Lady Cat Park. Royce City won, and the Lady Cats coming to bat. That's the uh, bottom of the first inning. And uh, the Lady Cats will have Kelsey Wallace, Sierra Smith, and Brinkley Driver scheduled to hit here in the bottom of the first. And my goodness, what a great game that uh, uh, Sierra Smith had on Tuesday night that we did. Six RBIs in that ball game and a grand slam home run and uh, two or three circus catches. Enough for me to call for the lion tamers and the elephants and the, all those uh, circus animals. And of course, David Carrillo added his touch by calling them ESPN kind of plays. They were nice to look, look at. Uh, uh, going uh, back on balls and just reaching up and stabbing them. And, just uh, really a, a great night for Sierra Smith. That'll be hard to top, but certainly Kelsey capable of it. Wallace. And Kelsey Wallace will lead off for the Lady Cats. Kelsey tough in that leadoff spot. May well lead the team in home runs this year. Don Wallace was talking about her having nine dingers this year. My announcer used to be with the Rangers, called those big flies, and they leave the yard. Pitcher for Royce City is Abby Thomas. Catcher's Aspen Holm. And here's the first pitch from Thomas. It's in there for a call strike to Kelsey Wallace. They've got Brooke Johnson at first, Casey Kirkendall at second, Madison Doherty at third, and Hadley Patrick at shortstop. Abby Thomas ready to work, and the 0-1 pitch is swung on and belted to uh, left center field. They're back, and it's uh, caught right on the what would be a warning track of a major league park. Boy, that was way back right up against the fence. And the left fielder went over and made the catch route number one. The way that wind was carrying on Tuesday night, that would have probably been a home run. And now here's Sierra Smith. One out, nobody on for the Lady Cats. After a long, long fly to left center field, right uh, back there up against the fence. Good catch by Roy City. Thomas a pitch, and that's high and outside for ball one. Frankly, driver in the on deck area for the Lady Cats are in the bottom of the first inning. Roy City scored a run. Uh, in uh, their part of the inning here in the first. 1-0 pitch, swung on by Sierra Smith, blooped out toward right field, right fielder coming in, and oh, she uh, did not hold the ball. She had it for just a second, and then it uh, came out of the glove. And that's another one of those testers. E9, I guess she got the glove on it. So runner at first with one out, and here's Brinkley Driver. 
They're playing Brinkley straight away in the outfield. And Thomas pitch on the way high and outside. You want to pitch that ball away from Brinkley. They usually do. Very seldom see anybody try to come inside on her. Or even you sure don't want to get it out and over the plate, extend those arms. 1-0 pitch, high and outside, 2-0 to Brinkley Driver. Almost like she's pitching around her a little bit. Abby Thomas, I didn't do the outfield. Cassidy Mullen in left, Haley Butler in center, and Carly Weatherford in right field. Royce City defensively. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Call strike on the outside part of the plate. Two and one, the count to Brinkley Driver. Pretty good crowd uh, making its way in and more fans all the time joining us. Here's the two one pitch. That's high and outside. Three and one, the count to Brinkley Driver. Just saw a member of the uh, women's basketball team, uh, Terela Kelly, who's also a member of the track team as well. She's a, one of the shot putters. Here's Abby Thomas, 3-1 pitch, swung on and belt, belted to left field, and that one's over the wall. A home run, a two-run shot for Brinkley Driver. And the Lady Cats take a 2-1 to one lead. Nice shot by Brinkley Driver, giving the Lady Cats a 2-1 lead. And that'll bring up Kate Womack. Kate hitting in the fourth spot. She's been a good hitter all year long. Just, I mean, from the moment that she got off the basketball court this year and got to softball a little bit late. Uh, team had been together for some time before basketball concluded their season. And uh, she just uh, started hitting from the get-go. Well, I can see why Coach Carrillo locks her in this number four spot, and she's got a good pop in her bat, too. Abby Thomas ready to work, and the first pitch to Kate Womack is a out. It must have been a tad high, perhaps outside. It was a close pitch all the way around. Ball one to Kate Womack. And here's Abby Thomas, 1-0 pitch. That one jammed inside, and uh, Womack got it off the fist and just kind of clipped it back into the screen for a foul ball. One ball and one strike. That time Thomas did go inside on Kate Womack. Probably shocks a batter when that happens. Most pitchers don't come inside. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Misses outside, 2-1 and one the count. Kate Womack. Sadie Stroud is in the on-deck area for the Lady Cats. Abby Thomas looking into the dugout, perhaps uh, getting a pitch. Now she's ready to go, and the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss, and the count evens up at two balls and two strikes to Kate Womack. Bailey Dorner coaching down at first base for the Lady Cats, and David Carrillo, the legend, down there at third base. Here's a 2-2 pitch. That's high and outside, three balls and two strikes. David has agreed to be on the Saturday morning coaches show tomorrow morning. And will be joined by Tony Martinez, the uh, Wildcats tennis coach. There's ball four, Kate Womack. Coach Jared Hammock's got one of those uh, duties that uh, daddies get from time to time. Watch your daughter play sports. And uh, I think uh, his daughter has a volleyball game tomorrow, and he had already committed to that by the time I, I waited a little late to try to get him on the coaches' show. So. We, he'll, he probably won't miss another one all for the rest of the season. But. And now here's uh, Sadie Stroud inside and low for ball one after the walk to uh, Kate Womack. One out, two runs in in the inning for the Lady Cats. They lead 2-1. Pitch to Stroud, and that is in there for a call strike. One ball and one strike. And Sadie back in the batter's box. And Abby Thomas with the 1-1 pitch. Swung on grounded hard to shortstop. There's over to second for one. The throw to first in time. Royce City turns the double play on a hard hit uh, ball to shortstop. 
And so that's uh, going to do it here in the first inning. But the Lady Cats get two runs. They had one hit in the inning. There was one Royce City error and uh, one runner left on base. So we played uh, one complete inning here from Lady Cat Park. Lady Cats of Sulphur Springs two and Royce City one. It's a top of the second inning here from Lady Cat Park. And it'll be hitters uh, six, seven, and eight uh, in the Royce City batting order. It'll be Hadley Patrick, Aspen Holm, and Carly Weatherford, scheduled hitters. Royce City, one run, two hits. Uh, Lady Cats, two runs, one hit in my book. And here's uh, Patrick, appears to be a left-handed hitter. He's standing on that side of the batter's box, outside of it right now, so he could walk across the plate, but looks like a left-handed hitter to start against uh, Bailey Haggerty in her second inning of work here. Lady Cats are four and one in district play, and I apologize, but I do not know the uh, Lady Bulldogs district record, according to David Carrillo, fighting for their playoff life. So they're in dire need of a victory here tonight. Here's the pitch of Bailey Haggerty. It's uh, low for ball one to Patrick. She is indeed a left-handed hitter. Kate Womack in a little bit. Uh, also, Maddie Millsap, first and third. And the 1-0 pitch. Call strike on the outside part of the plate. One ball and one strike. Outfield uh, pretty much straight away. Maybe a little bit over towards center field for the right fielder out there, Landry Bell. And the 1-1 pitch. Call strike. Umpire digested that pitch for a while and decided it was over there, over the plate for a call strike. One and two, the count now to Hadley Patrick. Shortstop for Royce City. Started that double play in the last inning. And one two pitch on the way. Just outside, the umpire kind of likes it out there, but that was too much out there. And two balls and two strikes to Patrick leading off here in the top of the second inning. Lady Cats leading 2-1. And Haggerty with a 2-2 pitch, and that's outside, and the count goes full. Two teams played uh, back in early part of uh, March, and the Lady Cats won in Royce City. Seemed like it was like 11-4 or something, pretty one-sided ball game. 3-2 pitch, is swung on, hit foul out of play. So the count remains three balls and two strikes to Hadley Patrick. Again, the six hole hitter for Royce City. And plays that number six position uh, in the scorebooks everywhere. Shortstop. And the 3 2 pitch swung on and hit down to Maddie Millsap at first. She gobbles it up, steps on the base for out number one. So an unassisted out for Millsap at first. And here's the catcher for the Royce City Lady Bulldogs. This would be Aspen Holm. Her parents would ask her to phone home. Oh, boy. I think James Terry, we got to playing around with puns earlier. Doug Haston threatened to walk out of the broadcast booth. So I better lay off that stuff. And here's Holm, the batter. The pitch from Bailey Haggerty is inside for ball one. Looks like the umpire thought about uh, the right arm and then changed his mind, decided not a strike. One and O the count to Holm, H-O-L-M, the catcher. One O pitch, call strike on the outside part of the plate. One ball and one strike. And Carly Weatherford in the on-deck area for the Royce City Lady Bulldogs. And Bailey now with the 1-1 uh, pitch. It swung on and hit out to center field. Stroud inner tracks out there. Now comes in one step and makes the catch. So two up and two out, and that'll bring up Carly Weatherford, right fielder. And she's a right-handed hitter for the Lady Bulldogs, hitting in the eight hole. 
We talked about shortstop being six. Uh, your pitchers one, catchers two, the first base three, second four, third five, and shortstop six. And pitch just missed outside for ball one. Then your outfield goes uh, seven and left, eight in center, and nine in uh, right field. So that last play that fly out to center field was an F8, a fly ball to the center fielder. And that's the kind of shorthand we use on these scorebooks. Here's a 1-0 pitch. And that pitch is in there for a call strike. Uh, one ball, one strike to Weatherford. They named a town in Texas after her. Bailey Haggerty back on the pitching rubber in the circle. And the 1-1 pitch is swung on and uh, mashed out to right field. It's in there for a base hit. Landry Bell over to cut it off and fires that ball on one hop into second base. But a nice solid single there for Carly Weatherford hitting the other way for a right-handed hitter to go into right field. So a two-out uh, single. And here's uh, Casey Kirkendall. I would imagine that would be the coach's daughter. Very nice fella, and they, I was told he was by Coach David Carrillo, Lee Kirkendall, the head coach. There's a ball grounded down to Wallace at short. She throws to Sierra Smith for the easy out of the, the one, the short throw to second base, and that's going to do it for Royce City. No runs, one hit, no Lady Cat errors, and one runner left on base. And we played an inning and a half here from Lady Cat Park, the Lady Cats of Sulphur Springs 2 and Royce City 1. Abby Thomas uh, completing her warm-up pitches. In fact, that was the last one fired to second base there by Aspen Holm. And the Lady Cats will be coming up here in the bottom of the second inning. And they'll have Addison Fidel, Landry Bell, and Maddie Millsap. Hit her 6, 7, and 8 in the order. Addison, a freshman. She's the designated player for this ball game. Also pitches occasionally. And uh, the most surprising thing to me, I, I, well, I really, I, I wasn't sure, you know, how really good of a softball player she was. I knew she'd been playing almost her entire life. I think she was out there in diapers originally, but here's the first pitch, Addison Cadell, high and outside for ball one. What was that uh, Dick Vitel, uh, Vitel calls them diaper dandies? <laughs> About something like that. But I've been amazed by how well she hits the ball. Addison is a very, very good hitter up there. And the 1-0 pitch just missed outside. Umpire pointing out that way to say, yep, out that way, just a little bit too much. So 2-0 the count to Addison Cadell. Here's a 2-0 pitch swing and a miss. It looked like Thomas took something off that pitch a little bit. Kind of an off-speed pitch, and the count is 2-1. Thomas doing a little house cleaning, uh, housekeeping around that rubber out there. And the 2 1 pitch swung on and hit toward right field, and that's going to be a oh, foul ball off the line by just a few feet. And that'll make the count two balls and two strikes. I thought that had a chance off the bat, but landed, oh, probably two, three, four feet off the line, something like that down the right field way. So two and two, the count to Addison Cadell leading off the bottom of the second inning. Lady Cats leading Roy City two to one, and we're in the bottom of the second inning. And Thomas, next pitch. That's outside, and the count goes full to Addison Cadell. Addison steps back in now. And Thomas, 3-2 pitch, swung on base hit up the middle by Addison Cadell. Looked like the center fielder came charging in there like she wanted to throw her out at first base, but Cadell runs better than that. So the second hit of the ball game for the Lady Cats, a solid single back up the middle by Addison Cadell. And here's Landry Bell. Landry was red hot with that bat early in the season. And in there playing right field tonight. Hits with Cadell on it first, and nobody out. See if she'll be bunting here. David Carrillo plays small ball. No, she swings away and pops it up to second base, and it's caught out there 
by Casey Kirkendall. That's out number one. I'll bring up Maddie Millsap. Madison, her, her official name, she'll discover that when the U.S. government gets a hold of her name. <laughs> Here's a pitch to Maddie Millsap, a bunt, and uh, picked up by Thomas. A low throw to first, goes out into right field. Fidel is going to head to third. The ball was bobbled a little bit by the right fielder. Any chance that she had to try to throw Cadell out at third vanished when she couldn't pick it up cleanly. And so uh, Maddie Millsap, I'd say a bunt single on that. I don't think a good throw even would have had her. And then Thomas threw the ball low, and now Kirkendall, Coach Kirkendall comes out and try to settle his team down here. Runners at first and third with one out. And Addison Cadell around the third base, and uh, Maddie Millsap at first. So a pair of singles in my book here. Again, that's the kind of play, you know, somebody could say, nah, a good throw would get her. So runners at first and third with one out. And the conference still going on right now. Home plate umpire deciding how long is too long for a meeting here. And now he's uh, going to walk out there. He's walking slowly. That's respectful. Very slowly. He's <laughs> giving them a lot more time. This is a, as uh, Coach Cipolletta would, would say, a long time out. This is a 60 second one <laughs> instead of that little short thing. Now Coach Kirkendall has had his say and he's back into the dugout. Lady Cats with runners at first and third with one out and here is Nyla Lindley in the nine spot. Natalie, Nyla can put a charge in the ball too. Uh, I think she's hit at least a homer or two this season. Royce City still back on the infield, and here's the pitch to Nyla Lindley, and that is up too high for ball one. Nyla is tall, so I wondered if that might catch the strike zone, but that one did not. So 1-0 and the count to Nyla Lindley. And Abby Thomas, the next pitch on the way in there for a call strike. That nailed the outside part of the plate. One and one, the count. Again, Addison Cadell at third and Maddie Millsap at first. One out in the inning. And Nala Lindley, the hitter. Here's the one-one pitch, and that was off the plate and outside. Two and one, the count. Lady Cats leading 2-1. Two, two runs and three hits. And now Abby Thomas back on that uh, rubber in the uh, circle. The 2-1 pitch is swung on and hit foul, and it's going to be out of play. Crashes off uh, the roof. That uh, rings the ballpark here, covers the uh, seated, seated area. And the count now, two balls and two strikes to Nyla Lindley. Again, one out, runners at first and third. In the bottom of the second inning, Lady Cats leading 2-1. Abby Thomas, the pitch on the way is swung on and uh, blooped out towards second base. The second baseman Kirkendall makes the catch and the runners will hold at first and third. That's a couple of pop-ups on the infield uh, in this inning and that'll bring the top of the order up and Kelsey Wallace. Now to that, number seven, Kelsey Wallace. Wallace is 0 for 1. She hit the ball deep to left center field. It was caught right up against the fence by uh, Cassidy Mullen by Roy City in the first inning. So she's 0 for 1. Wallace, a very dangerous hitter up in this situation for the for any team to face. And first pitch high and outside, ball one. But Sierra Smith, no picnic on deck, as, uh, as uh, Texas High found out on Tuesday night with a grand slam and six RBIs. And the 1-0 pitch, that is right down the middle of Gladys Alexander there, and it's one ball and one strike. Gladys Alexander, the street that uh, comes into the student parking lot, used to run all the way to Main Street, but they did away with that. Here's a ball foul back out of play, one ball and two strikes. Yeah, once they built a multi-purpose center, they 
that was the end of where Gladys Alexander went. It uh, just stopped right there at the multi-purpose facility. Abby Thomas, one-two pitch, well outside, two balls and two strikes. Thomas walks back to the back of the circle as gets ready for the next pitch. Now she's got it and ready to go here. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Misses outside. The count goes full to Kelsey Wallace. Lady Cats at first and third with two outs here in the bottom of the second inning in this 2-1 ball game. Both teams uh, scored their runs in the first inning. Or a run in the case of Roy City. Here's a 3-2 pitch. That's foul back into the screen by Wallace. It seemed like a little bit cooler here at the ballpark. I hope a blue norther is not headed this direction. We're supposed to have some rain uh, later tonight. James Terry assures me that we will be well out of the park by the time that happens. And Thomas with a 3-2 pitch. That's high and outside, and Kelsey Wallace will walk. That'll be Here's a bases loaded for Sierra Smith. Two in one week. Yeah, that's asking a lot. Bases loaded with uh, two outs. Sierra hit a fly ball to right field that was dropped out there. It was a tough play for the right fielder coming in. But almost caught the ball. It just uh, fell out as she hit the ground. Swing and a miss. Boy, Sierra took a massive cut there. And she was going for the downs. Strike one to Sierra Smith. You look at Sierra and you think, that, that girl couldn't hit a home run. But I mean to tell you, she generates some power. She hits that ball well. And really give it a charge. Abby Thomas ready to work. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swung on and blistered out into left center field. And it's uh, going to go all the way to the wall. Two runs are scoring. A third run is going to be held at third base. They throw back behind Wallace. And she holds up. So a two RBI double for Sierra Smith. And on the play, Addison Cadell came in to score. And also Maddie Millsap. And they held uh, Kelsey Wallace at third base. David Carrillo did. He didn't want to out at home plate. He wanted Brinkley Driver to get a shot here. So runners at third and second, though. Lady Cats now with a 4-1 lead. Brinkley Driver hit a home run her first time up. The wind has died down a little bit. Here's the pitch. That's outside ball one. Uh, flag on the pole is kind of just kind of hanging around out there right now. Not It looked like the breeze has dropped off a little bit. But I, it, Brinkley doesn't need much help. She generates a lot of power. Here's a 1-0 pitch. High and outside, 2-0 the count. First base, of course, is open if you wanted to pitch around her and try your luck with Kate Womack. But... Uh, it's a little too early for that. It's just a 2-0 and o count. Plenty of time for Thomas to try to get back that get that count back in her favor. Here's a 2-1 pitch, high and outside. Certainly would appear that she's pitching, if anything, very carefully to Brinkley Driver. Brinkley in her fourth year on the varsity teams all across uh, East Texas, especially, know the power of Brinkley Driver. And the 3-0 pitch. And that was right down the middle of Houston Street there. And three and one the count. Brinkley back in the batter's box. Abby Thomas rocks and pitches and the ball hit off the fist and blooped down the left field line. Just off the line by foot. My goodness, that was close. David Carrillo was trying to, you've ever seen somebody, you know, kind of at the bowling alley give that body English? Tell that ball where to roll. David Carrillo was trying to get that ball to land in fair territory. Landed foul, so the count is full now. Three balls and two strikes to Brinkley Driver. She did not particularly hit that very well. It was right on the fist. Still almost blooped it to left field. Here's a 3-2 pitch. That one was hit foul. Just got a piece of it. Fouled it back into the screen. The count remains three balls and two strikes. Kelsey Wallace running at third. And Sierra Smith down at second.
And Thomas here with a 3-2 pitch, swung on and hit foul. That time Brinkley stepped, uh, oh, not step over the plate, but she reached over the plate and protected that plate and hit the ball foul into the screen. Make sure that that didn't get that call strike on the outside part of the plate. And she'll look for a fatter pitch now, it's three and two. And Thomas, the three-two pitch, swung on. That was a pretty good pitch to hit. She hit it foul. I've, somebody told me one time that if that ball, you foul it straight back like that, you're just missing. So you're tuned in pretty well. You just you just missed it. So I'd say Brinkley doing pretty well here. Here's a 3-2 pitch. And uh, ball four, a close pitch. Just a little bit too low, and the bases are loaded. Way that umpire pointed to first, I was afraid that was going to be a call strike. Bases loaded once again for the Lady Cats, and here's Kate Womack. She walked back in the first. So, Kate, no official at bats. And we do have a pinch runner now, Abby Bayer. Boy, she is going to be doing quite a few events, at least four, I think, at the area track meet. First pitch inside to Kate Womack for ball one. Abby is a hurdler, so she'll do both of those events. Long jump. Did well in that. And the sprint relay also. One-two pitch. Misses down low. Two and oh the count. Sounded like uh, she was behind uh, when she took the baton in that uh, sprint relay race, and the Lady Cats ended up winning it as she came home with a big finish. Pitch misses to Womack, and she's ahead in the count, 3-0. and oh. So bases loaded, bases full of Lady Cats, two outs. And the 3-0 pitch now to Kate Womack. Took something off that and just poured it right down the middle of Highway 19. How about that? 3-1 and one the count. Playing Kate straight away in the outfield and the 3-1 pitch. And that is ball four. And that'll walk in a run. So Kate Womack with a walk and an RBI. As the Lady Cats get a fifth run, they lead five to one now. As Kelsey Wallace came in to score. Here's Sadie Stroud as the Lady Cats have batted around here in the inning. Or they will have once Stroud completes her at bat. She grounded into a double play in the first. Hit the ball hard, but right at the shortstop. And Thomas' first pitch is in there for a call strike to Sadie Stroud. Again, you've got Sierra Smith at third. You've got Abby Bear at second. And Kate Womack at first. Here's the next pitch. Swung on and lashed to left field and caught out there. Right at the left fielder, Cassidy Mullen. Made a good catch out there of a well-hit hard ball there by Sadie Stroud. But that's going to do it for the Lady Cats as they bat all the way around. And they will score three runs in the inning. And had uh, one, two, three hits. And I show no Roy City errors. And the Lady Cats had three runners left on base. So we played two innings here at Lady Cat Park. The Lady Cats five and Roy City one. It's a top of the third inning as Bailey Haggerty warming up here to uh, get ready to start her third inning of work. Also in the park tonight, just saw him come in. I think he's been around. I have not spied him lately, but Xavier Cork. And he's wearing the largest Dallas Cowboys coat that I have ever seen in my life. But after all, when you're 6'9", or whatever it is that the X-Man is, Got to have those clothes that fit. Well, good to have X in the ballpark. A lot of the basketball players, good sports fans, and you see them everywhere. Lauren Skinner now will lead off here in the top of the third inning. She singled back in the first. So one for one in the ballgame. Boy, she hit a blue darter down to third, and it did not... Uh, deter Kate Womack. She's still in at third base. Bailey Haggerty ready to work here to get the inning underway. And the first pitch on the way, a, a, a swing and a miss. That was that slap look. 
read some articles about the slap in the Dallas Morning News this week. They were talking about how if you execute it perfectly, you're just almost impossible to throw out at first. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swung on and grounded to the shortstop. Wallace has it. Long, throw to first. Not in time. That's a base hit. Even a good throw. She pulled Mills up off the bag at first. She knew she had to hurry for that uh, slap hit her hitting the ball in the hole. And uh, Skinner, another infield base. Well, not the first one was not an infield base hit. It uh, just about took uh, arm and all from Kate Womack as it was hit so hard down to third base. Here's Haley Butler. She also singled her first time up, but she just put it down on the infield. Swing and a miss. A full swing this time for strike one. Lady Cats are leading five to one here. Two runs in the first, three in the second. Yeah, Butler just uh, may have even bunted. Uh, my memory's a little faulty on it. Uh, hard to field. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and that just missed outside. One ball and one strike to Haley Butler. Again, from the left side with Skinner running down at first. And the pitch now from uh, Haggerty. That was down too low and two and one the count. To the center fielder for Royce City. And now Butler's back in the batter's box. And Haggerty toes that rubber out there. And the two one pitch. Call strike on the inside part of the plate. Two balls and two strikes. Bailey coming inside to the left-handed slap hitter. And Butler back there in the batter's box. And the 2-2 pitch, that's outside three and two. Continuing on that story about slappers, there's a rule difference in college and high school. College players cannot leave the batter's box and hit the ball. That's illegal. You can certainly do that in high school, and they do it all the time and makes them harder to throw out. They're halfway to first by the time they touch the ball. Here's a 3-2 pitch, swung on and grounded slowly to Kate Womack. Fields fires to first in time. It took a hard throw to get Butler. Nice play there by Kate Womack. No time to dilly-dally. Lauren Skinner moves down to second base with one out, and here's Cassidy Mullen. She was on on a fielder's choice. The Lady Cats tried to turn a double play, and they got the first half of it, but... A bad throw on the end of it, and uh, that allowed uh, Roy City Run to score. Butler came around to score. So Mullen is 0 for 1. Pitch from Bailey Haggerty. She brought that ball back inside again for ball one. Kelsey Wallace kind of playing in the hole. Expect this hitter to swing late. And the 1-0 pitch, and she did swing late. Hit it right to Wallace. Throw to first in time. Millsap started to throw over to third and put the ball in the pocket. Probably a wise decision. And on the play, Skinner moves down to third. So Skinner at third, two outs, and here's Brooke Johnson. She was on on the fielder's choice. Her first at bat. And actually, well, anyway, here she's 0 for 1 on on the fielder's choice. First pitch misses outside for 1 and 0. Count on Brooke Johnson, cleanup hitter for Royce City. She could drag them back into this game quickly with one swing, you would think. And Bailey Haggerty, the 1 0 pitch, called strike on the outside part of the plate. One ball and one strike. That was a very nasty pitch and would be hard to uh, hit that one much of anywhere. That was low and outside. Very good pitch there by Bailey Haggerty. And Bailey with a 1-1 pitch. That was just off the plate. She moved it out just a little bit more. And two and one the count to Brooke Johnson. She plays first for the Lady Bulldogs. And the 2-1 pitch, that swung on, base hit to center field. The run will come in to score to make it a 5-2 ball game. An RBI single for Brooke Johnson. 
and Skinner comes in to score. Still two outs with a runner at first, and here's Mason Doherty, or Madison, excuse me, Madison Doherty. She grounded uh, short in the uh, first inning. And Bailey Haggerty with a pitch on the play. Uh, down in there, just uh, maybe low. Looked over, but low. 1 0 the count. And Bailey ready to work here. And a 1 0 pitch on the way, and that just missed outside. 2 0 the count. Bailey has missed with a couple of really close pitches there on the first two. And Johnson running at first. Roy City has scored here in the top of the third, and they trail 5-2. to 2-0 two. Two pitch, took something off that, came in too high, 3-0 and oh the count. Bailey Haggerty, as we've mentioned before, just almost walks nobody ever. But right now, 3-0 and count. Here's a 3-0 pitch. That one poured in there for a strike, 3-1 and one the count. Remember getting a box score game changer in one of the Lady Cats games where she had two walks. And I went, holy cow. That just really never happens. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Call strike on the inside part of the plate, and Bailey Haggerty's back to a full count now, 3-2 and two on Madison Doherty. Spells her name like one of the singers for the old uh, Mamas and Papas. 3-2 pitch. That swung on and pop foul. Maddie Millsap is over and makes the catch, and the Lady Cats uh, keep uh, any further damage from happening with that third out. Roy City got a run in the inning. They had two hits. With no Lady Cat errors. And one runner left on base. So we played two and a half innings here from Lady Cat Park. It's the Lady Cats of Sulphur Springs 5 and Roy City 2. Well, some changes uh, for Roy City. I'm still trying to correct my book here. They have brought in to pitch the first baseman, Brooke Johnson will come in to pitch. I'm not sure that Thomas is still in the ball game because now down at first base is Janae Williams. So Janae Williams now at first. And uh, Brooke Johnson has moved over to the pitching mound and I pretty well believe that Abby Thomas is now on the bench. So a pitching change for Roy City as uh, Thomas went two innings and allowed five runs and four hits. And so a pitching change here. As Addison Cadell will be the first one to face Brooke Johnson. Who was again playing at first base and came in to pitch. It'll be Addison Cadell, Landry Bell, and Matty Millsap, the schedule hitters for the Lady Cats here in the uh, bottom of the third inning. Lady Cats are leading 5-2. to two. As this begins the second half of district play, Lady Cats finish the first half 4-1, and one, only that loss over in Mount Pleasant. And the pitch from Johnson is swung on, hit one hop to the second baseman. There's a throw to first in time. That was gobbled up there by Casey Kirkendall. She threw over to Janae Williams. So one pitch and one out here in the uh, bottom of the third. Boy, uh, Johnson has an unusual delivery of that ball. Looks unusual coming out of her hands. Here's Landry Bell. She hit a pop-up on the infield, 0 for 1, popped to second. And the pitch on the way. Boy, she is just almost, that arm just almost twist or something like you would, you know, throw a curve or something like that. That pitch was, uh, I believe, uh, well, I don't know what happened. There's a ground ball to one to third base, a high throw to first, but Janae Williams is tall. And so 
That is two quick outs on a couple of grounders to the infield. That will bring up Matty Millsap. Yeah, that first pitch had everybody buffaloed. And... But anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Here's Matty Millsap now, and there's a strike on the outside part of the plate. 0-1 oh, in the count. Two out, nobody on, and what has been a quick bottom of the third so far. Just a handful of pitches thrown up there by Brooke Johnson. And the 0-1 pitch, and that hit Matty Millsap. And a hit batter. That's the first hit batter we've had tonight. And that'll bring up uh, Nyla Lindley. Nyla popped on the infield to the second baseman, 0 for 1 in the ball game. Gets with Matty Millsap at first and two out. And here's the pitch to Nyla, and that is a outside for ball one. Well, when the umpire points as outside, it almost looks like a strike call. Any motion by that right arm uh, confusing for me a little bit. Here's the uh, 1-0 pitch. Swung on and fouled right at uh, home plate. Feet of the catcher, and it's one ball and one strike. To Nyla Lindley hitting in the nine hole. And Johnson's 1-1 uh, pitch, swung on, grounded, foul down the third base way. And the count is one ball and two strikes to Nyla Lindley. Again, straight away in the outfield. The wind is, uh, the home runs now are going to have to be self-powered just almost 100%. Lost our wind out here. One ball and two strikes, swung on Tommy Hawk down the left field <laughs> As Nyla went up and got a high pitch, and Tommy hawked it down the left field line, but foul. And the count one and two. Two outs with a runner at first here in the bottom of the third. Lady Cats leading 5 2. And Johnson's 1 2 pitch is swung on and blooped uh, to the middle of the diamond, and the shortstop is over and makes the catch, and that's going to do it for the Lady Cats in uh, the uh, third inning. A hit batter, but nothing more. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on base. So now we've played three complete innings here at Lady Cat Park. The Lady Cats of Sulphur Springs 5 and Royce City 2. Well, move along now to the uh, top of the fourth inning. Again, Lady Cats five and Roy City two. As Bailey Haggerty warming up, getting ready to start her fourth inning of work. And for Roy City, they'll have hitters six, seven, and eight scheduled to hit here in the um, top of the fourth inning. Those hitters would be Hadley Patrick, Aspen Holm, and Carly Weatherford. Lady Bulldogs, five hits in the ball game. Two runs, five hits. Uh, Lady Cats have had uh, five runs and four hits. <laughs> but the left-hander, Patrick, getting ready to step into the batter's box against Bailey Haggerty. Left-handed hitter in there straight away. First pitch from Bailey is swung on grounded to Wallace at short. Gobbles it up. Good throw to first for out number one. One up, one out. And one pitch and one out. All of a sudden, everybody's late for the dance. They hit the first thing they see up there. And here's the catcher now for Roy City. This is Aspen yeah, Holm. She had a fly ball to uh, well hit, but uh, right at Sadie Stroud in center field. She came in one step to make the catch. Pitch from Bailey Haggerty in there for a call strike. So home 0 for 1 in the ball game. Again, the outfield uh, straight away. Fairly deep in left field for Nala Lindley. That pitch just off the plate, one ball and one strike. Bailey toying with the outside of that plate and sometimes out there just a little too much for the umpire's taste. 
So one ball and one strike to Aspen Holm. And the 1-1 pitch. I tried to check a swing, went too far. Strike two. One ball and two strikes. See Jake Cadell down below. Addison Cadell's daddy. And ready to work. 1-2 pitch. Swung on right back to Bailey Haggerty. She stabs it and throws it to first. A good fielding pitcher can really help your cause, and that taking that one hopper there with a nice accurate throw for Bailey Haggerty. Two up and two out, and here's Carly Weatherford. She had a single in the second inning. Now batting number five, Carly Weatherford. So here's Carly, as I recall, she's the one that hit that ball out into right field. And it does look like uh, the right fielder is playing a little bit more toward the line. Here's a ball hit to center field. Sadie Stroud again in her tracks uh, in center field. Makes the catch for out number three. And once again, a quick inning. Not many pitches. No runs, no hits, no errors. And nobody left on base. We've played three and a half innings now from Lady Cat Park. The Lady Cats of Sulphur Springs 5 and Royce City 2. It's the bottom of the fourth inning. The Lady Cats will have the top of the order. Uh, Kelsey Wallace uh, scheduled to hit against this Brooke Johnson in the unusual delivery. She almost twist of that hand, almost like you would throw like a... It's a, almost like... Uh, it's hard to describe. It'd be easier to just see Doug's video and see what I'm talking about, but she really almost inside outs that ball. And it, perhaps it does cause... Uh, you know, some kind of curve on that ball. It's, uh, she was certainly hard to hit in that last inning as she went through. Uh, she did hit a batter, but uh, the other three went down without uh, hitting the ball very well. Had a couple of grounders and a pop-up. Now Kelsey Wallace, she flied to deep left center field and also walked and scored. So Kelsey is 0 for 1 officially in the ball game. Hits here in the bottom of the fourth. Lady Cats leading 5-2. And Johnson's pitch on the way, and that is in there for a call strike. And that pitch looked like it backed up a little bit. Now it looked like a, the old screwball, you know, it's about breaking in the opposite direction of a curve. And that would, the way her arm moves, that, that was what you would expect. Here's the 0-1 pitch, foul ball down third base way. And the man with the golden hands in the coaching box down there, David Carrillo. I wonder if he was a ball player at Colleen Ellison High School where he went. 0-2 oh, the count now to Kelsey Wallace. Here's the 0-2 pitch. That's up too high to Wallace. One ball and two strikes. And now Johnson is ready to go. Got the pitch, and here's the 1-2 pitch. That's outside. Probably hoping that ball would break a little bit over, but it stayed outside. Two balls and two strikes to Kelsey Wallace. I imagine as long as Kelsey's played softball, she's seen all kinds of deliveries. And the 2-2 pitch swung on. Oh, a one-bounce shot to third base. Fielded nicely there by Madison Doherty, and she throws to Janae Williams at first for out number one. Well struck, but a one-hopper. Right into the third baseman. Now batting number 17, Sierra Smith. Now Sierra Smith. She was on on an error on a uh, fly ball that was dropped up in right field. Scored and then uh, had a two RBI double in the second. That big hit is a big difference in this ball game. It's a 5-2 game, so you take away that and be a different ball game. Here's Johnson's first pitch to Sierra Smith. It's uh, inside ball one. Johnson, uh, tough to hit here. She's allowed nothing but a hit batter. She's faced five batters. Sierra Smith, her sixth. And the 1-0 pitch, and that's high and outside, 2-0 the count. Brinkley driver in the on-deck area for the Lady Cats. And David Carrillo down at third, and Bailey Dorner down at first base. And the 2-0 pitch on the way. Swung on and well hit to left field. The left fielder backing up and makes the catch back there. 
And boy, the wind is not carrying that ball anywhere near like we saw Tuesday night. Sierra, I think, uh, thought she got a lot of that one, but the left fielder just yeah, moved back three or four steps, <laughs> made the catch. Nice catch out there by Cassidy Mullen. So two up and two out. Here's Brinkley Driver. Hit a home run in the first inning, a two-run shot, and walked in the second. So she is officially one for one. And Johnson with a pitch, and that misses outside, ball one. Again, the umpire pointing out that direction. No, out that way. Too much. Ball one. Not the most unusual call that I've ever heard on the field on softball. 1-1 one, one pitch. That misses inside. 2-0 and oh the count. Had one umpire at a kind of a scrimmage game or just kind of a fun game. He would either say strike or you should have. Well, I guess it was ball or you should have. <laughs> That's what it was. 2-0 and o count. That is outside 3-0. and o. And you get uh, three you should have, and you could, you could uh, go back to the bench. You were out. Three you should have, and you're out. That was a fun game. And a fun umpire, too, by the way. Here's a 3-0 and o pitch, and that's a call strike on the outside part of the plate to Brinkley Driver. Lady Cats have two out here in the bottom of the fourth. And nobody on base. Lady Cats leading 5-2 here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And Johnson with a 3-1 pitch, and that was low. And a base on balls. That's the second walk for Driver after she hit one out of the park in the first inning. And once again, we'll have Abby Bayer coming in to run. Boy, Abby begs uh, dropping that Abigail bear on her. <laughs> I wonder if it's Abigail begs, too. I don't know. They both go by Abby, A-B-B-I. Here's Kate Womack. She's walked twice in the ball game. There's a call strike first pitch to her. Seems to be getting a little cooler here at the ballpark. I keep saying that, but it. Feels like the air conditioner got turned on. Here's the old one pitch. That misses outside, one ball and one strike. Like when I lived in Sacramento and you get over to the Bay Area over there about Vallejo or something and it was like the air conditioner came on. Boy, they get in that Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean. There's a base hit by Kate Womack and Abby Bear will hold it second. So a solid single by Kate Womack. And two outs with runner at second and first. And now here's Sadie Stroud. Sadie hit into a double play and uh, hit a well-struck fly to left field that was caught. So she has hit the ball rocket solid both times, and she's 0 for 2. And Johnson works with two on and two out, and there's a call strike to Sadie Stroud. She's hitting the ball like a former Texas Ranger used to named Al Oliver. I don't know of any Ranger that ever hit the ball harder than he did. And oftentimes it was an atom ball. Here's the old one pitch. That's outside, one ball and one strike. He made consistently good contact, and there were so many times he would hit a, a screaming line drive right at somebody. Here's a 1-1 pitch, swing and a miss. And Stroud down in the count, one ball and two strikes. Abby Bayer running at second, and Kate Womack on at first. And one and two on Sadie Stroud. A tough pitcher to hit here, this Johnson. That pitch outside, two balls and two strikes. Kate Womack didn't have a problem. She just ripped the ball out into left field. And Johnson ready to work here. And the 2-2 pitch on the way, high and outside, 3-2. and two. Abby Bear taking really big uh, leads off the base once the ball is released. Abby is a very dangerous uh, base runner. She can change that game with her speed. Here's a 3-2 pitch, swung on base hit for Sadie Stroud to center field. Abby Bear heading to the plate. Here's the throw, and she, oh, she knocked the ball loose. She's safe, and runners move to third and second. They had her out at home plate, and there was a uh, collision 
and the ball was jarred loose by Abby Bear to score the run. So Stroud with an RBI single. And Womack around to third, and Abby Bear came around to score. But, boy, they had her dead to rights on, a, on some good defense. But the catcher could not hold it after, a, after the colli collision at the plate. And there's a ball blooped uh, toward right field. That'll be out of play foul by Addison Cadell for strike one. Addison had a single in the second and grounded the second her second time up, so she is one out of two in the ball game. Lady Cats get a sixth run now, and they lead six to two. Right now they've got two in scoring position for a very good hitter here, Addison Cadell. And the old one pitch swung on foul ball down third base way. And Addison in an 0-2 hole here. As she's hit a, flat, a foul ball down the right field line and a foul ball down the left field line. So that's a that's a hitter that, you know, how in the world are you going to defense them? They hit the ball all over the park. Straight away, would you believe? Here's the 0-2 pitch, swung on and hit back up the middle. It's a, oh, it took a bad hop on the second baseman. The run comes in to score. Because that took a real bad hop when it got to the second baseman, Kirkendall, there. And it handcuffed her. Now that is number eight, Landry Bell. And so a run comes in to score the seventh run for the Lady Cats. Kate Womack came in to score. Sadie Stroud all the way around to third. Cadell at first. Seven to two ball game. And here's Landry Bell. She is 0 for two, popped to second and grounded to third. And Johnson with a pitch, swung on, grounded to shortstop. Oh, it took a bad hop. Throw to first is close play, safe at first base. Another run comes in to score. Boy, this is a tough infield tonight for Roy City as that ball taking some really bad hops out there. Now it's about number 12, Maddie Delsap. And the Lady Cats leading by the score of eight to two. And Coach Kirkendall is back out to uh, gather everyone around to try to figure out what they want to do here. And so Lady Cats have been uh, hard to get out, but this they've had some uh, they've had some little gremlins on the infield here tonight on in this inning. A ball to second and a ball to short. Once they got to the player, they took a really mean little hop. I that ball was hit with some spin. Now Coach Kirkendall heading back to the dugout. And they're going to stick with Johnson here. The Lady Cats have put up three runs. It's eight to two as we play here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Four straight hits, but again, two of those uh, little bad hop uh, balls on the infield. Maddie Millsap, she singled and was hit by a pitch, one for one. Johnson's pitch on the way down low and inside and a very nice stop there by Aspen Holm, the catcher for Roy City. That one looked like it was ticketed to head back to the backstop. Nice stop by the catcher. Here's a 1-0 pitch, swung on, well hit the left field. That ball is out of here. A three-run Jimmy Jack by Maddie Millsap. And the Lady Cats have now put six runs on the board, and they lead 11 to 2. Mark all these RBIs here. A three-run home run. Wow. Mark, a couple of bad hop plays on the infield, and a, and a smash there by Maddie Millsap. And that will bring up the ninth hitter in the inning now. Here's uh, Nyla Lindley. And believe it or not, folks, the first two batters in this inning went out. Six straight batters have scored for the Lady Cats. Walk, single, 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 home run. Pitch outside to uh, Lindley. 1-0 the count. Lindley popped a second, popped a short. So 
She is 0 for 2. And the 1-0 pitch from Johnson swung on well hit, but that, uh, she was out in front of that. Hit it up into the freeze, but in well in foul territory. One ball and one strike. Lady Cats have scored six. They lead 11 to two. Ball in this ball game open here. One one pitch, that's outside. Two and one the count to Nyla Lindley. Second inning that the Lady Cats have had nine batters and this one potential to go further we'll have to see depends on Lindley up here and the two one pitch that's outside three and one the count boy an inning that looked uh, like it was going to be routine two up and two out and then the whole base on balls and then uh, five straight hits and the 3-1 pitch. There's a base hit by Nyla Lindley. And the hit parade continues for the Lady Cats. And so a chance to hit for the second time in this inning. And Kelsey Wallace will hit for the second time in this inning as she started this thing with a grounder to third base uh, probably 20 minutes ago. Don Wallace told me the Baylor Lady Bears won. Well, I was hoping that they would, would help me play another game since I was a little bit involved tonight, could not see that ball game. I was hoping it was a late game tonight, but no such luck. And the pitch now to Wallace, high and outside, ball one. I'm not sure Wallace is on record as picking uh, the Lady Cats to win win it all but he's told me that of course he right now he's denying every word <laughs> one oh pitch to wallace and the ball blooped towards center field they're trying to surround it out there the shortstop makes the catch and that's going to do it uh, for the inning but a huge inning uh, for the uh, lady cats as uh, the lady cats score six runs they had one two three four five six hits uh, I did not score any of those errors on the Roy City infield on those bad hops. And uh, the Lady Cats had one runner left on base. So we've played four complete innings now, and boy, we have a new ball game. It's uh, the Lady Cats of Sulphur Springs 11 and Roy City 2. Well, uh, we're uh, getting ready to go into the bottom of the fourth inning. We'll talk about the Lady Bears of Baylor. Uh, they won 72-67. They have really not been tested in that uh, NCAA tournament, but my goodness, you get to the final four, you better expect to be tested. My brother was commenting on the men's uh, uh, final four and about how every game is like a buzzer beater, a one or two point ball game, just incredible ball games been going on. So, some good uh, round ball here in March. Uh, now turned into April madness, I guess now. For Roy City, uh, Casey Kirkendall will hit, uh, then uh, scheduled to hit the top of the order, Lauren Skinner and also Haley Butler. Casey was on on the fielder's choice in the second, 0 for 1 in the ball game. Pitch from uh, Bailey Haggerty, swung on and hit uh, out to right field and... That is a foul ball just off the foul line. The home plate umpire taking a real good look at it. And uh, he shot that arm out there immediately to indicate that that was a foul ball. That was very close. Now, again, that couldn't have been just a foot or two off that line. I actually, when the ball landed, I thought it was a fair ball. But, but again, he's right along that line. I'm sitting here in the press box. That pitch misses one ball and one strike. Kind of like Bob Euchre up there in the top row screaming he missed the tag. <laughs> oh, what a guy, Bob Euchre. They tell some of his stories. And the 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, and that is misses 2-1. and one. Bob Euchre was the one that they asked him how to catch a knuckleball, and he said nothing to it. You just wait until it stops rolling and pick it up. And I thought, well, for a catcher, that's just about as good as it gets for trying to catch a stinking knuckleball. Two and one pitch. That's outside. Three and one. The count now to Casey Kirkendall. 
against Bailey Haggerty as we play here in the uh, top of the fifth inning. The Lady Cats leading 11 to two in this one. A big six spot. Big home run by Maddie Millsap. 3-1 pitch, that's in there. Three and two the count. And the count goes full to the nine hole hitter for the Royce City Lady Bulldogs, Casey Kirkendall. And Bailey Haggerty with the 3-2 pitch and hit foul back out of play. Hear it uh, crash on the roof on its way out. Count remains three balls and two strikes as we play here in the top of the fifth inning. Again, Wildcat baseball going on tonight. They're in Lindale trying to break a losing string there. They're, they've lost five in a row. Here's a 3-2 pitch. It's off of Bailey Haggerty's glove, out to Wallace at shortstop, throw to first, not in time. And that's a base hit off the glove of uh, Haggerty and then the throw by Wallace, not in time. That'll bring up Lauren Skinner and she's got a perfect uh, record tonight. She is two at bats with two hits. She hit a rip snorter in that first inning that just about took Kate Womack's glove and off on the way down to left field. Pitch swung on and tapped foul at home plate for strike one. Also singled and scored in the third. So Skinner, what you would expect out of a leadoff hitter, that slap hitter. It looks like a good one, uh, two for two. She's been able to get on tonight. And back there in the batter's box, wide open stance. They probably close that off as the pitch comes in, kind of straighten it up. That's usually what they do. And the 0-1 pitch, which was a slapper, you never know. One and one, the count, with Kirkendall running down at first. And the batter, Lauren Skinner, probably just trying to tap that ball and put it on the infield. 1-1 one, one pitch. That was low and inside, two and one the count. Lauren Skinner. First City trying to get back in this ball game now, down 11 to two. Bailey Haggerty's given up a run here and a run there, but been pretty tough tonight. Two one pitch, call strike, two balls and two strikes. See Bailey two, three, four, five, five hits in the ball game. And the two runs as we play here in the top of the fifth. 2-2 two -two pitch and a swing and a miss. She may have tapped that ball. I, I heard a, what sounded like a foul tip, but it was held by Brinkley Driver. So that'll be now a strikeout. So that's out number one and here's Haley Butler. Singled and scored in the first and grounded to third, uh, one out of two. And the first pitch on the way, ooh, inside going all the way back to the screen and uh, runner Kirkendall takes off uh, down to second base. Wild pitch. And uh, runner at second now with one out. And a 1-0 count now to Haley Butler. And the 1-0 pitch. Call strike, one ball and one strike. Second half of that final four doubleheader tonight, uh, Connecticut and Notre Dame. Boy, two teams that have really been good the last ten, five, ten years. Pitch misses outside. And two and one, the count. And Bailey Haggerty looking at that wristband. Ready to work here. And the 2 1 pitch is swung on and blooped down to Kate Womack at third, makes the catch for out number two. I thought that might have a chance to bloop over uh, two, Womack, but uh, it did not. She backed up and made the catch for out number two. So runner at second with two outs, and here's Cassidy Mullen. She was on on the fielder's choice and grounded to short. 
So she is uh, 0 for 2 in the ball game. Haggerty's pitch on the way and call strike on that outside part of the plate. If I was Bailey, I'd just hit that spot three times and see what happens. That's yeah, a tough pitch to hit. Of course, this, this hitter would probably slap it toward left field. That was way a little bit further outside, one ball and one strike. Probably Bailey hoping that she would chase on that one. That was out there a little bit too far to be tempting. And here comes a 1-1 pitch on the way. Swung on, hit foul out of play. Went over the batting cage, the old original batting cage. They've added a second one now, but that went over the first. One ball and two strikes now to Mullen. And Bailey Haggerty ready to go here. And the pitch on the way grounded the short to Wallace. It took a bad hop on her. The same thing that we saw happen to Roy City happen to uh, Wallace there. I'm telling you what, this is a rough infield tonight. So runners at second and first with two outs. And here's Brooke Johnson, first baseman slash pitcher tonight. On on a fielder's choice and had an RBI single in the third. So she's a dangerous hitter to have up there right now. Pitch from Bailey Haggerty down too low, ball one. <laughs> and Bailey uh, getting that pitch there. And ready to work now, the 1-0 pitch. And that's outside, 2-0 oh, the count to Johnson. And Bailey Haggerty slowing down a little bit now with runners at second and first and two out. Trying to make sure she executes these pitches here. A tough hitter. Here's a 2-0 pitch. And that's outside 3-0 the count. And again, Bailey checks that wristband after getting the signal from Coach Dorner. Remember we were talking about what they sit on over there, those uh, buckets? Those are buckets of softballs. I got that straight from Bailey Dorner. There's a ball four. Boy, that was a close pitch. And the bases are full of Lady Bulldogs. They have Kirkendall at third, Mullen at second, and Johnson at first for Mason Doherty. The third baseman, she grounded to short and popped uh, a foul ball that was caught by Maddie Millsap. Now hits with the bases loaded, two out. This pitch in there for a call strike. Oh, Bailey. Pounding the strike zone after, a, again, a, an unusual walk. And the 0 1 pitch. And that just off the plate. One ball and one strike. Bases loaded. Two outs. Lady Cats leading 11 to 2. Trying to snuff out this uh, Royce City rally. 1 1 pitch. That's over but low. Two balls and one strike. Bailey really trying to be fine with these pitches and maybe throwing a ball or two more than you normally see her throw. But still, she's just had the one walk. Then a couple of hits in the inning, including one of those bad hop jobs. And the 2 1 pitch. Call strike. Two balls and two strikes. Again, umpire digesting that one for just a second, and then up comes the right arm. Two and two, the count. Bases loaded. And the 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss, and uh, Bailey Haggerty is out of the inning with a huge strikeout. She struck out a couple in the inning. So Roy City had a big threat. They had no runs. 
They did come up with a couple of hits and also a walk. No Lady Cat errors and three runners left on base. We played four and a half innings here from Lady Cat Park. And uh, the Lady Cats of Sulphur Springs 11 and Roy City 2. Well, we have a rumor here in the press box. We're going to rumor monger here for a while. We understand that maybe the Wildcats baseball team is down to Lindale 4 to nothing. Not sure what inning that is, and really I'm not even sure if that's an accurate score. But So anyway, there you go. But uh, whatever it, is, it turns out to be the truth, we will do our best to uh, have that uh, for you before the evening is over. posting it online along with the Lady Cat score as well, a uh, story. And uh, here in the uh, bottom of the fifth, and here's Sierra Smith on on an error, hit a two RBI double and fly to left, and there's a ground ball slowly hit the shortstop, the throw to first, uh, safe at first base. I don't, you couldn't play it much better than the shortstop did there, Hadley Patrick. But Sierra Smith, just a leg hit there. Sierra kind of bent over there at first base. Uh, Coach Dorner, I don't know if she's maybe got a cramp or something, but Coach Dorner is uh, talking to her. Now she straightens up, so maybe nothing there, just kind of resting after a, a hard run to first to beat that one out. So. Uh, Base hit for Sierra Smith, and that'll bring up Brinkley Driver, who they have pitched very, very carefully to tonight, except for the first time up when she hit a home run over the left field wall. Old phrase I love that for a power hitter, hit him out of any park in America, including Yellowstone. Or perhaps we should say Jellystone, right? Yogi. Now having number 22, Brinkley Driver. So here's Brinkley Driver now with a runner at first. Sierra Smith running down there. Brinkley, a home run in the first and two walks. Drove in two runs and scored one. And the pitch is strike on the outside part of the plate. Brinkley Driver. Lady Cats would like to score uh, one run and call it a night here. Here's a pitch and went too far on the swing. 0-2 the count to Brinkley Driver. Brinkley has had some, some issues with the nagging kind of health stuff that probably kept her from being a lot stronger hitter this year. That pitch is outside 1-2 and two the count. So she's had to battle through some stuff. Get her nice and healthy for playoffs. Here's a 2-1 pitch, high and outside, 2-2 two two the count. To get her red hot. And I, they're still probably talking about some of those home runs that she hit at McKinney North last year in the playoffs. We still think that one might still be rising out there over the scoreboard. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Outside, three and two the count. And Brinkley back in there. It send everybody home happy. Well, not everybody. There's a lot of Royce City fans here tonight. Three and two pitch swing and a miss for the strikeout throw to first. And Sierra Smith dives back in there. So one out with a runner at first, and here's Kate Womack. Kate walked in the first and the second, and then had a single and scored in the fourth in that big six-run inning. And Johnson's pitch is outside for ball one. And the 1-0 pitch on the way. 
That swung on and blooped out the right field way, and that's a foul ball just off the line. Kate Womack just missed that one. We've seen three or four of them down there kind of blooped it down that way, and all of them seem like they've landed in foul territory. Not by much, most of them. Here's a 1-1 pitch. That's swung on. Foul back out of play by Kate Womack. Again, Kate, volleyball player, then went right into basketball, and then right into softball. One ball and two strikes. Swung on, hit foul back into the screen. And one and two, the count to Kate Womack. Kind of had her year planned. Well, let's see. We'll start with volleyball, and then we'll move right into basketball, and then into softball. And the one and two pitch, it's high and outside, two and two, the count. And now the catcher, Holm, is going to go out and talk to her pitcher, Brooke Johnson. Give the umpire a chance to clean home plate. That looked like if you were going to do a film of a how-to on how to clean home plate. That pretty well did it right there. It's a very nice job. And the 2-2 pitch on the way. High and outside, 3-2 and two the count. I've seen some of those older umpires that don't like all that bending down with that brush and everything. They'll try to clean it off with their shoes. <laughs> Just try to kick that dirt off there. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Swung on a hard one hopper to the shortstop. The throw to second. Out at second base on a close play. As uh, just in time to get to Sierra Smith at second. Ball was bobbled by the shortstop. But uh, they got the runner, lead runner at second. So two outs with runner at first. Womack who's now was on on the fielder's choice. And here's Sadie Stroud. She had a big uh, RBI single last time up. Also hit into a double play, fly to left. So she's one out of three. That pitch misses outside, ball one. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Lady Cats leading 11 to two. Two in the first, three in the second, and that big six spot in the fourth inning. Really uh, made a relatively tight ball game, just uh, one-sided. There's a call strike, one ball and one strike to Sadie Stroud. The homecoming queen, by the way. And here's the 1-1 uh, one, one pitch. Swung on, lash to left field. A hard one hopper to the left fielder. Throws it back into the infield. And uh, that's two hits in the inning. Womack moves to second, Stroud to first. And here's Addison Cadell, and all she's done tonight is two out of three. Singled in the second, scored. Grounded to second, singled in the fourth, and scored. So she's two out of three. I think she might have been the recipient of one of those ground balls that took a bad hop. Hits another one right here. Oh, it took another hop. And uh, she's safe again. And the second baseman, Kirkendall, has just really had a tough time with that ball taking miserably tough hops out there. Bases are loaded now with uh, two outs. Here's Landry Bell. She had uh, one of those singles last time. Popped to second, rounded to third, one out of three. Also scored, and after that single, pitch outside, ball one. Landry Bell back in the batter's box. One and oh, the pitch. Down too low, 2 and 0. Oh. Remember, it had been Little League days. We had a good pitcher named Raymond, and his dad would sit up in the stands with a count like this and say, Don't help him, Raymond. Don't help him. And the 2 0 oh pitch. 
call strike on the outside part of the plate. Two and one to Landry Bell. A cheerleader also, by the way. Johnson ready to work. And the 2-1 pitch, and that's a call strike on the outside part of the plate, or he might have said uh, check swing that was not checked in time. Two balls and two strikes. And Johnson, 2-2 pitch, and oh, she might have gone too far on the swing. The home plate umpire said a check swing. He made the call on his own, did not ask for help. Of course, his help is out there in left field just about. So the count goes full now to Landry Bell. And here comes the pitch from Johnson, 3-2, high and outside, and that's going to do it. That's the ball game right there as the Lady Cats score their 12th run on a run that was uh, walked in on a base on balls, and the Lady Cats will win this one by the score of 12-2. And the team's uh, beginning that uh, walk across the field, a handshake line. After this one, and the Lady Cats 12 and uh, Royce City 2. So the big difference in the ball game, that big six run inning uh, in the uh, in that bottom of the fourth that made it 5 to 2 and it went to 11 to 2. Lady Cats just uh, get it done. They're 5 and 1 now in district play. And uh, Roy City will have some work to do if they're going to obviously uh, get into the playoff picture. So they'll want to try to pick up some wins in the weeks ahead. Lady Cats next week, uh, oh, they'll be going at Greenville. And then I believe uh, they have Lindale here at home. Pretty sure that is uh, Lady Cats' schedule next week. Yeah, at Greenville on Tuesday night, and then uh, home game against Lindale on uh, Friday. And so uh, Lady Cats win this one again by the score of 12 to two. Bailey Haggerty picks up the win. We've seen her sharper, but uh, did a adequate job out there, just allowing the uh, two runs, had two, three, four, five, Six, seven hits. So two runs, seven hits for Bailey Haggerty on the win. And the Lady Cats uh, pounded the ball again. I'm not sure. All those infield jobs might be, uh, they might be scored errors uh, by, by a score. So we'll have to see how that all turns out. The Lady Cats had four. Looked like they had ten hits. And they had six of them in that one six-run inning. So uh, Lady Cats defeat Roy City by the score 12 to 2. James Terry is running spots back at the station. We appreciate him. Uh, Doug Haston shooting video for a replay and also set everything up here tonight. They'll be posting a game to YouTube that you can check out at your leisure. And uh, also will be available on replay on uh, for our Channel 18 uh, cable customers that mostly live in Sulphur Springs, some in Como and perhaps some other cities. I'm Don Julian with your play-by-play. -play. Once again, our final score here from Lady Cat Park, the Lady Cats of Sulphur Springs 12 and the Royce City Lady Bulldogs 2. Thank you for joining us this evening, and so long, everybody.